Okay, so here we got two parts off of this first new mold that Eric has made us. That's right, duck calls. I'm gonna show you how I cast the barrel of a duck call. My name is Eric Stribel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Alfred backpack hanger in stainless steel and aluminum designed by me, holds your backpack, lets you charge your phone, Hold your keys, super versatile. So I'm packing up some here that were recently sold. Thanks for those of you who've purchased recently. It really helps support the channel. There are two main parts of a duck call. The main insert, which is where the reed goes and that's what makes the sound. But in this video, we're gonna make the barrel. The nice thing about making the mold for this barrel is that it's cylindrical it has a constant diameter so i laser cut a piece of acrylic here and this is going to be the separator that separates the two halves of the silicone mold and the nice thing is here is i can just me measure the barrel and then laser cut this piece and glue it in place i've been using a little bit of pva white glue just regular school glue this stuff is great cleans up easy doesn't damage the part attaches uh, very nicely during the molding process and is easily removable. I need some other sacrificial pieces and I'm gonna cut those out of cardboard on the laser as well. And this is the plug that goes into the bottom of the barrel. And you'll see there is a ring on top of a flat piece and this is gonna become sort of a registration part and we're putting it in here so that when we pour silicone in from the other side, we have a registration point for the two halves of the molds to come together. And I just press fit that in place. Now, we're gonna cut out our key rings. These are locking key rings, and this is gonna attach on the acrylic part. And it's what's gonna allow the two halves of the silicone mold to lock in place. I clean up the laser cut cardboard parts with a little bit of denatured alcohol and a rag just to get the soot off and clean up the parts. And then I'm gonna glue these rings together with some more PVA. And these are sacrificial parts. They stack on top of each other and they're gonna get torn out of the silicone molds a little bit later. You'll see that as it comes together. Now these parts are basically gonna have an undercut because of the way that they are put into the mold. And this will allow, you can see the uh, undercut section there. This will allow the molds to lock together. It'll become clear when we start molding it. We're gonna use some shellac here to seal up the cardboard. This just prevents the silicone from seeping into the cardboard or being absorbed by the cardboard. It makes it a little bit easier to be removed a little bit later on. This is a piece of PVC, I think it's two inches, that I have machined a groove out of, not all the way through. And I can just jam a screwdriver in here and separate the PVC and put my ring inside of. And this is a super easy way to mold cylindrical stuff. Basically, it's a mold box, but it's a cylinder and you can just pry it apart and we'll set the existing parts in here and glue it right to those cardboard pieces. And we'll have a look down inside and this is where we're gonna pour the first half of the silicone mold for this duck call. To mix up my silicone, I'm gonna wear a pair of latex gloves to protect my hands. And I believe that I'm using some smooth on dragon skin here. And I'm only using this because I happen to have it around. I normally do not use like these smooth on products, but I happen to have some left over from another project. If I'm in a pinch and I need some silicone, I can go to a place around where I live and get some of this stuff the day of. Normally I use a different silicone, but in this case, this is what I got. So I'm mixing it up into the vacuum tank it goes. You're always gonna wanna degas 
your silicone in a vacuum tank to remove all the air bubbles when you're making silicone molds. I'm gonna pour a little bit right down the middle and I just wanna let that silicone kind of flow out. It's difficult to get the silicone down in there to wanna trap any air bubbles, so just a little bit at a time. And I'm gonna pour in one place on the outside to let the silicone flow, not to trap any air bubbles, not to create any more additional air bubbles. We want the silicone to flow in really nice so we get a bubble-free part. The silicone's cured and I can remove it from the PVC. We'll disassemble the pieces down here and then we'll build the second half of the mold up here, easy. One inlet, one outlet, piece of cake. So the goal here is to remove these divider pieces and clean things up and add our poor sprues so that we can make the second half of the mold and get on to casting. So we'll remove that acrylic piece. Same with these, right? Just gonna peel apart cardboard. Cardboard is sort of the ideal sacrificial material for this process because it can just be peeled away. It's easy to cut more and it works out great to be removed from the silicone. It's ideal. And of course the laser is what makes all of this possible and this system with this locking. And this is the versatility of the cardboard, of course, right? Make new ones for these for this undercut situation right. Right. This is sort of I'm using a dental tool here to just peel the layers of the cardboard apart it's pretty easy it comes right out it's ideal it just comes right out doesn't stick to the silicone doesn't stick to the part doesn't ruin the part, doesn't melt into the part. You could wash this with water if you needed to. The glue just comes right off. Let's apply a little bit of release agent onto the silicone so that when we pour the next bit of silicone on here, it doesn't stick to itself. I am only applying release agent onto the silicone. The part itself does not need any silicone or release agent added onto it. We want to duplicate that the best we can. I take my PVC and I line it back up with the same seam line and place it over the part and I've here I've already added in the pour sprues. It was difficult to film that because my fingers are in the way all the time. I use a little bit of clay in the expansion groove here to guarantee that no silicone comes out when we pour the second half. I'm going to mix up another batch of silicone to pour the second part of the mold. Mixing up equal parts of this smooth on product here. Like I said, I think it's a dragon skin. Mix it up really, really well. And then it's going to go into the vacuum tank to have all the bubbles removed out of the silicone. And this is going to help ensure that we get really good surface quality of the part that we are casting and that there's no air bubbles on the inside of this mold that we're making so that we can make a good resin part. Again, I'm using the same technique as before. I am pouring in one spot and letting the silicone flow out. I've actually turned the vibration table on here to vibrate any bubbles in the silicone to the top so that we can have a bubble-free silicone mold. All the silicone's been cast and cured. It's time to remove it from its PVC tomb. And we will separate the two halves. We'll remove the two sprues. One will be a pour and one will be a vent. And we will slowly pry 
the two halves of the silicone apart, right? This is why you apply that release agent of the petroleum jelly that's thinned out with the naphtha. It's very thin, but it prevents the silicone from sticking together. Now, all that's left here is to remove the master part from the mold. A little bit of persuasive wriggling and out it comes. And you can see that registration in that key on the piece in the middle and the rest of the silicone mold has an undercut. The mold goes back together. Look at that. Let's mix up some resin and get it into the mold so that we can make a test part to see how the mold turned out and if it's going to work for making parts. I add a little colorant in here just so I can see it. Uh, rise up in the mold and you can see that as well into the vacuum tank the resin goes so we were gonna degas the resin here as well pull all the air bubbles out and then we're gonna pour into the first half of the mold then we'll close it and inject the rest of the resin into the top half of the mold so let's take it out of the vacuum tank Pour this resin into the bigger side of the mold and then we'll put the cap on. I have some straws there and this is my vent. And it's also a reservoir, right? Because when it goes into the pressure tank, it needs a little bit of extra material so that when the pressure compresses the resin in the tank, it has some excess material to flow back into the mold. So I've injected the rest of the resin into the mold and I've placed it inside of this pressure tank. We will hook up some air to it and we'll put 60 PSI of air pressure onto the part and maybe even add a little bit of heat to it and let it cure for several hours. All right, the part has cured. We're gonna release the air from the pressure tank remove the pour and the vent and you'll see i have a couple of air bubbles at the top there it's because i did not tip the tool at an angle it was laying flat on the table the next cast we'll have to tip the tool a little bit to force the air bubbles out but other than that this is a successful part it looks like it's well formed there are no blemishes on the part it looks like the mold is good so we'll cast another one here and remove this one from the mold. This one has a little bit of pearl inside of a clear resin to give us this nice uh, burled kind of finish. And this part looks good. There are no air bubbles in this at the top that were trapped during the casting process. And we have a nice part. You can even see the lettering inside the part from when it was cast so this is the mold the silicone mold it's made to snap together so there's no rubber bands there's no tape there's no anything to hold it together it holds itself together when you resin cast these parts it's sort of the beauty of the system of having this undercut and you get these fantastic resin parts stay tuned in the next video for part two and we're going to make the main part of the call Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links in the description below and on the channel page. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.